Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. What a thrill it is to gather together on this very special day. And if you're here for the very first time, a warm welcome to you. My name's John, one of the pastors on staff, and we hope you come on back. I wanna say a quick shout out to all of our volunteers who have poured uh, their heart and time into this very special production on this day. Uh, They did uh, such a great job. Uh, We're gonna start uh, our reading here in Matthew 2. This is verse 1 through 3. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, and about the time some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply troubled when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. Now today, I want to talk about the trouble with Christmas. Now, I'm not talking about the trouble uh, when it comes to kind of the Christmas lights being tangled up and you have to detangle them again, although that struggle is real. Not talking about the trouble at Target because the lines are too long and they ran out what you wanted to get. Not talking about the trouble where your puppy left a special gift under the Christmas tree for you to unwrap. Not talking about the trouble of our kind of contemporary celebration of Christmas. I'm talking about the trouble with the original Christmas, the original story, the trouble that it caused, and the trouble that we would be in if uh, we didn't have Christmas. Now, to begin, I want to ask you a question, though. How many of you believe that you're pretty good at gift giving? How many of you would say maybe you're above average when it comes to giving gifts, maybe I'm the only one. Uh, I think I'm kind of pretty good at it. You know what I'm not good at? I am not good at wrapping gifts. I'm not good at wrapping gifts at all. I happen to have a couple gifts right here. And in order for us to continue, I need a a volunteer. So I'm going to come down and ask for a volunteer uh, that can help me with this exercise. Sorry, you're at the end, and we're going to have to... We're going to have to talk. So here's the question I have for you. I'm not even asking whether you want to volunteer or not. Uh, So here's the question. Um, uh, Which gift would you prefer to take home with you based off of appearance? Okay, so uh, I got a couple here. Would, would Would it be this one? See, that's pretty nice. Would you say that's a nice gift? That's one that maybe somebody put a lot of time in, a little TLC, right? I did not wrap that gift. I did not. Or would it be this gift, right, that's a little more rough around the edges, maybe? So if you, now I'm going to give you both of these gifts. So I'm going to ask you, which one, though, would you, based off of appearance, would you rather have? Would it be this one? It would probably be this one, right? Okay, good. I want you to open this one up. All you have to do is pop the top off of that one. Oh, oh that's oh, that's embarrassing. It's an apple. And I got a little hungry in the back. And let, let me just take that back. And I, I, it's already turning brown and everything. That's, so, that's kind of gross. Sorry about that. Here, um, why don't you try to open that one up? Now, you can tear that one right open. I like the masking tape uh, that was used. You like how I did that? That's lovely, isn't it? it there is some gaps there, but... Um, yeah, look at that. That is a JVC. That is sound dampening earbuds. Merry Christmas. That's all for you. Thank you for helping. That's right. Yeah. Uh. Now, the point of this whole exercise uh, is that when God gives us gifts, they often come strangely wrapped. They often come uh, wrapped. That's one trouble with Christmas is the presents often come strangely wrapped. And when we look at God's gifts, uh, we're often tempted to re-gift them because we look at them and we think, I don't know if I want this. I don't know if I like it the way it is. And we are tempted to pass them off to somebody else quickly and quietly. In fact, that was what Joseph was about to do. Remember Joseph? Joseph was about to marry Mary, only he, did, he discovered that he got kind of a two-for-one deal. He didn't realize, right? He was going to marry Mary, and then and she came with a baby, and he felt very betrayed, and it troubled him, and he was heartbroken, but it was a strangely wrapped gift, wasn't it? Because imagine the privilege that that 
was. Imagine Joseph, he was able to spend more time with Jesus than almost everybody else in the world except for maybe Mary. What a privilege that was. And he almost re-gifted it. Uh, and so, uh, because he didn't want it. Why? Because he felt like it was a betrayal. What seemed to be true from the outside was different than what was on the inside of it. God has a way of giving his best gifts with the weirdest wrapping paper. I wonder what some of you have been handed this year by God. I wonder what God has allowed into your life this past year, and that you look at it right now and you think, I really would rather re-gift this to somebody else. I really don't want this. Maybe I could get rid of it really quickly, really like Joseph, really quietly so nobody knows about it. Has, has your heart been broken? Did somebody that you thought you were potentially going to marry suddenly betray you somehow, and you are ready um, to term it the most, um, the most troubling, you know, one of the most difficult things that you've ever had to go through? Was it a DUI? Did you get a DUI and it was embarrassing and it was shameful and you don't even want to talk about it right now, but it feels like it owns you right now? Was it that you lost your job? You lost a promotion? Maybe you didn't get into the program. Maybe you didn't get on the team. Maybe you didn't get into school. Maybe you put your heart and soul into a company and it has failed. Um, and so now you're stuck. Uh, and. And Christmas teaches us to look at things and not just judge them by their wrappings, to not be so quick, to not be so hasty coming to a conclusion. Think about the nativity scene. When you, think, when you look at the nativity scene, they seem so happy, they seem so cozy, and they seem so comfortable, but that really wasn't the case, was it? I mean, the baby Jesus was wrapped in shop cloths. Could you imagine going into a mechanic shop and grabbing some of their claws and wrapping your newborn baby in a mechanic shop cloth? I mean, the baby was laid in a feeding trough. It, it smelled like animal, uh, and, and so, but... The horror of wrapping a baby in those wrappings had nothing to say about what was important with the package that was inside of it. So let me suggest to you that you look again at what you've been handed. Maybe there's more to it than you first thought. What if that DUI was actually just a wake-up call, something that would allow you to assess the kind of decisions that you've been making? While the DUI is never fun and it's embarrassing, sure, but it could have been worse. You could have been um, in a drunk driving accident. You could have killed somebody. You could have been in prison. And maybe you can look back now and say, wow, I think that actually was maybe the best thing that ever happened to me because now you've been able to reassess and recalibrate and rethink your decision making and rethink your, your friends or whatever and realize that maybe, just maybe, you were headed to a future that you didn't want to get to, you wouldn't have liked if you would have arrived. Instead, now you can pick new friends, you can honor God with the plans that God really has for you. Or it doesn't feel good to be broken up with or to be cheated on, and you thought that guy was the one, you thought that you were potentially going to get um, married to, to this guy, and you thought he was the best thing that ever happened to you, but because God got rid of the zero and God wants to put a hero in your life, maybe, just maybe, it's the best thing that has happened for you. Maybe the guy um, wasn't really good husband material. How do you know he was going to be there for you down the road? How, was he going to, to love you through, through better or for worse? Would he have been there if you were, suddenly got sick and you had to be in the hospital? Would he have been a giver down the road rather than just a taker? Maybe God has a, has a person of integrity and of character and of compassion that he has set aside for you but you may never have met him if it wouldn't have been for this breakup that you're tempted to reject because of how it's wrapped up. <clears throat> and losing your job isn't pretty and it's stressful, but you, would have, um, you never would have had the guts to quit the job and start, start the new business that you were intended to start if you were tied to that old job that you had no passion for, but it was tied to a paycheck, but now that it's lost, and now God is maybe working in new ways in your life because with your new freedom that you've been given, you can head in a new direction that feels more risky, but that God had planned all along. 
Next time you're tempted to see something that you've been handed as terrible, could there be a strangely wrapped present in it? Remember, Joseph wanted to put Mary away, but because he didn't 2,000 years ago, we have an action figure of Joseph that most of us put out this time of year. That's the trouble with Christmas. Its presents are often strangely wrapped. The other trouble with Christmas is that it's awkward if you call yourself king. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Christmas is all about a king coming to this world, but he came into a kingdom that had a throne that was already occupied. Matthew 2, again, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod about the time some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? You see, uh, King Herod had a nickname for himself. Do you know what his nickname was? King of the Jews. And when you see the word that asked to underline asking, that word in the Greek is present participle emphasizing continual action. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? It means that these wise men came into Jerusalem and they were at constantly asking all over town. They were constantly going to the street corners and they were asking, where's the king of the Jews? Where's the king of the Jews? Where's the king of the Jews? They were asking everywhere except the castle where the king of the Jews lived. And so Herod brings him in. And he's like, who are you? And they're like, well, we're a group of wise men from a far off country. And listen, they were not three dudes. I mean, we just say that because there were three different gifts. They, they were high diplomats from um, uh, probably from Babylon, which means they were traveling with up to maybe hundreds of people, probably soldiers, probably uh, bodyguards, and these are officials. And he says, uh, Herod says, well, who are you? We're the Magi. Well, who are you looking for? Well, we're looking for the king of the Jews. And Herod would say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name's Herod, King Herod, King of the Jews. The throne is taken. And their response probably would have been something to the effect like, oh, this is kind of awkward, but we're kind of looking for a younger king of the, you know, Jews with more power. Have you happened to see him around? And you see, Herod was notoriously jealous but he couldn't do anything at this point to these officials. Otherwise, he would have provoked a war between nations. He was just a puppet king and, and of Caesar, so he didn't have the kind of authority that he could have used in order to start any kind of war. Um, but he could look for the king that they were talking about, and when he did, he had a decision to make. And this whole awkward interaction where the king was born, but there was already a king there, it gave Herod one of the most important moments in his life where he had a critical decision to make, the same one that every single one of us has to make at some point in our life, and that was this. Was Herod going to retain the starring role in his story, or was he going to recognize the entrance of the one who came into the world to take that position? Was he going to sit on his throne and stubbornly hold on to his crown, or was he going to do what the Magi did and go and bow his knee before the newborn king, recognizing him as sovereign lord, the majestic master, the ruler of the universe, the one who at the end of the day all of our knees will bow to and all of our tongues will confess is the Lord and the one true God? And can you guess what Herod did? You remember the story? He retained his crown. He was too stubborn. He wanted his own kingdom. And it was futile, futile because eventually he died anyhow. And how much of his throne could he take with him? None. The trouble with Christmas is it's awkward if you call yourself king. So let me ask the key question. Are you still calling yourself king or queen? That when the trouble comes, it has to be all about you. That when the troubles come, that you're the one who's going to go into battle. You're the one that feels the weight of the responsibility. You're the one that's going to have all the answers. You're the one who has to implement whatever needs to happen in order for the kingdom to remain your kingdom. Are you still calling yourself king and queen? Well, no wonder. You're so exhausted. No wonder you're so discouraged and no wonder you're so angry. And maybe today, 
You can take your cue from the Magi. And you can take off your crown and you can bow your knee before the newborn king and trust in the one who came into the world in order to take that position in your life. Jesus said this later in his life. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. You see, without Christmas, we would all be in trouble. Because when the troubles come, when the relationship fails, when you lose the job, when, you, when your choices embarrass you, you're going to have wounds, you're going to have some shame, you're going to have pain, you're going to be lonely. And if there were no Christmas, then that, that would be all that there would be. That's it. All done. And then eventually you die. But I have good news of great joy. In the town of David, a Savior was born for you too. And he grew up and he said, I have overcome the world. And then he went to the cross and he overcame all of it. And then he says, through the power of the Spirit to you and to me, come on, come on. You don't have to be the king or queen any longer. That's my role. That's my position. If you will allow me to be your sovereign ruler, I have a plan for you. But those plans are sometimes weirdly wrapped. And so you're going to need to trust me to take off your crown and bow your knee so that even in the midst of the troubles, you will have my peace and assurance that I'm still in control. The Magi went, they found the baby, they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they were filled with joy. Maybe in the chaos of the season, you'll have a moment in a minute as you come forward. Maybe you can open up your gifts before the Lord, before the table. The good news is God doesn't want gold, frankincense, and myrrh from you. God simply wants your heart, mind, and soul. And so when you come forward, will you take a moment and open up your hands as a symbol of opening up your heart again, your mind, maybe for the first time, and invite the Lord to be the ruler of everything that you've been trying to rule over? Because when you do, the promise is the Lord will never abandon you, abandon you because he's got a plan and it includes you. Merry Christmas. Heavenly Father, thank you. The blessing that this message is of what you've done in history is that we don't have to feel like everything's random. That instead, we can take heart, as your son said, because we know that you're still in control, even as everything seems so uncertain. Lord, we're going to open up our hands and give you the gift of who we are, as broken, as wounded as we are, Lord, we submit ourselves to you to honor you for what you've done for us. Amen.